Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You know what's funny about this morning? I have to highlight it. Mother knew I was going to do it. I sat there in the back during fellowship as everyone was fellowshipping in. I looked around and I want y'all to just look for a second. Look at each other. Yeah. Well, first off, the usher staff, we're probably going to have to get some more chairs out the back soon because we're growing. That's number one. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, and secondly, outside of my staff, not one man of God in the chairs. All women. Ain't that beautiful? Amen. Now, tell the men of God to get right. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a fan of that. It's okay. Praise the Lord. We got the Warriors Manual today. Amen. The season finale of Kingdom Principles. Amen. Anybody been blessed by the former four? Amen. 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 Bless God. The Warriors Manual. This was really good. Who did this? Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm excited about today because God gave this to me um, about a week ago. And um, it's funny because, you know, I had all the other four for the series already written, and he wouldn't give me this one until last week. And I said, God, why didn't you give it to me yet? He said, just hold on. So last week he gave me this. He said, I want you to talk about spiritual warfare as the last principle of the kingdom. And when I saw everything that happened this week, I understood why. People of God, we are at war. Amen. And it's not about race. It's not about your background. It's not about your credentials. It's spirit versus flesh. Yes. God versus the devil. And so in order to operate in the kingdom effectively, we must know the principles that operates under. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 is going to be the opening passage. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. New King James Version. We're going to read the verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. New King James Version. Give everybody time to get there. And then when you get there, you just give me an Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. You got to move fast. You want me to move faster than the men too, man of God. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 10. We're going to read the verse number 18. New King James Version. Ready? Read. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Amen. We're pray over the word, and then you may be seated. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for every single person under the sound of my voice. I pray that the word of God will go forth on receptive hearts and that the word of God will reap a good harvest tenfold, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold as the people of God cultivate the word. We thank you, Father, that no demonic spirits will tamper with the sound, no demonic spirits will tamper with the minds and hearts of the people. We thank you that we cover them all in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, you gave me this word, so I'm asking you now to preach and teach through me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me good out there? Yeah. Amen. We bless God. Ephesians 6 verse 10 is the opening passage because this passage breaks down the full armor of God. Um, so today's title, if you didn't see it before, is called The Warrior's Manual. The Warrior's Manual. Manual. When God gave this to me, um, you know, it's funny that when we know certain things already, you know, when God brings it back to our attention, sometimes we go based off what we know. And so the Lord began to break this thing down to me a little deeper than what I've already known about spiritual warfare and how it operates. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're not even going to dissect the armor until the end. I got to let y'all know about your adversary. In order to defeat your enemy, you have to know how he works. Amen. Amen. And so the first thing I'm going to highlight here is 
The word wow, if we can put it on screen for me, please. Wow. It is a trick or stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive. Okay? Now, the Bible says that this, the, in the verse 11, we are supposed to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is that? Against his tricks and schemes. Because the thing about the enemy is that he doesn't necessarily fight you straight up. He likes to deceive you. Yes. Somebody say deception. deception. You see, if you know that you can trick somebody into doing something, you do it that way, then fight them straight up. Yeah. You see, the art of war is to make your enemy believe that you're his friend. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Amen. Glory. We're going to teach. <laughs> uh, many people are deceived by people close to them. Right. Yeah. Because the enemy doesn't use someone you don't like. He uses the ones that you love. Somebody. Yeah. Judas would not have been able to deceive Jesus if he wasn't close to him. Right. Betrayal don't come from someone that I don't know. It comes from someone I love. Someone that's near and dear to my heart. And so the devil likes to trick the believers so that he can ensnare them. Okay? Watch this. Satan is the master deceiver. You might want to write it down. The word deceive means to cause to accept as true or invalid what is false or invalid. Let me break that down. Deception is merely making you believe that a lie is actually the truth. Yes. See, there's a difference between a lie and deception. A lie is opposite of the truth. Deception is when I make you believe that the lie is the truth. If you're awake, saints, say amen. Amen. The devil likes to deceive the saints because he understands that, number one, we are Christians. So we know that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hello. You know? Yeah. Jesus is Lord. God is God. Amen. The devil is the devil. He knows we know those simple truths. But what he also knows is that if he comes craftily and cunning enough, there's a slight possibility that the saints might not see him. Why? Because the devil ain't outdoors, he in the pews. Oh, I'm a priest today. No, don't look at your neighbor funny. It ain't that. <laughs> Not in this church. That's why we stay on guard so they don't be in this church. Hello, somebody. See, what we have to understand is we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You're dealing with spirits. So when violence is amidst in the land, it's a spirit. When murder takes place, it's a spirit. Mm, I'm a preach. When jealousy enters someone that you love, it ain't them, it's a spirit. Yeah. You see, we got to start looking at things for what they are. The first deception that the enemy uses is to make man look at man as the problem instead of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to teach you real good. I'm going to start early. Let me show you this. Write this down. The first and most important battle that we will fight in spiritual warfare is in our minds. Yeah. The first and most important battle that you will fight in spiritual warfare is in your mind. Battlefield of the mind. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to give y'all text to go with the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3, and we're going to read the A&P version. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3, A&P version. If you're there, saints, say amen. The saints ain't there. Amen. We're going to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. Did y'all get the last thing off screen? Y'all got it? Amen. No? Okay, go back, Sister Kelly. Give him a chance to get it. This is good. While I'm letting y'all write, uh, let me break this down to you. God gave me. Um, so this week, you know, there's a lot of chaos going on in the land. And I saw a lot of leaders condoning the violence and condoning the uproar and things of that nature. And then I began to see, God began to show me, he said, they've been deceived. I know I'm going to talk about it. They've been deceived. And I said, God, why? He said, because they're looking at man as the problem and they don't see the spirit in the man that's the problem. And when leaders can't see the devil, that's a problem. I'm going to preach. Because see, if the leader can't see it, the congregation ain't going to see it neither. The blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. And so what God wants us to remind ourselves of is that the weapons of our warfare are not physical. Yeah. Right. Amen. Minister Tyler, can I teach? You see, I'm from the street. 
And so I was taught that as long as you're strapped, you got a chance. But what I didn't understand is that I can be strapped and they can be strapped, but the devil don't care about neither one strap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to teach. See where I come from. As long as you can protect yourself, you're good. But there's this one thing that my mother taught me when I was young, and I didn't really understand until I became a man. She said, son, there's always someone smarter than you, someone better looking than you, and someone that's stronger than you, someone that's more equipped than you, someone that's got more weapons than you, and if you ain't got God, you ain't got nothing. Amen. Amen. Shout out to Beverly Baker. I love you. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10 verse 3, are we there? Yeah. You there? Yeah. Amen. A and P version. If you don't have it turned, you can look on screen. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit lead here. I'm about to break this text down. Verse number three. It's reiterated that spiritual warfare cannot be a physically made concept. It says, although we're in the flesh. Back up, back up. Although we are in the flesh, we are carrying on our spiritual warfare, not according to the flesh. So although you pinch yourself and you feel yourself, the weapon, your spirit, you can't see it. Hello. Because if you see your spirit, you're dead. I'm trying to help somebody. You shouldn't be seeing your spirit floating. Because if you're seeing your spirit floating, you are not present in your body, ma'am, sir. Hello. And so what the devil wants us to focus on, though, is that because we can't see our spirit, then it's not relevant. Let me help you. We are spiritual beings in a physical body, not physical beings that just happen to have a spirit. Yeah, man. <laughs> because the spirit of the living God is what breathes life and creation into place. So we came from the spirit of God. Amen. You want to know something? Even demonic spirits came from the spirit of God because they wasn't always demonic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to preach now. And so what they want you to believe is that don't focus on the spiritual aspect because if you don't focus on it, you'll never take them serious. Yeah. Sound like deception to me. Yeah. Let's break this thing on down. So our spiritual warfare cannot be a physically made concept. I'm giving you notes right here so you might want to write it down. I don't put the notes on screen because I'm going to try to pay attention. Amen. Our spiritual warfare cannot be a physically made concept. Next thing. Spiritual weapons are not weak. They're extremely powerful. Mm, God, I love your word. Spiritual weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Let me break down what a fortress actually is. Okay? A fortress is like a castle of sorts. It's a place where people can go and hide because it's fortified. See, that word fortification means that it's secure. And so when something is secure, usually it cannot be undone unless done from within. Dig right. your mind if I teach. See, back in medieval days, the soldiers would band together in the fortress because they knew that everyone outside of the fortress would have a harder time trying to break in. And so I don't even have to really fight you straight up. All I got to do is rain arrows on your head and you're going to die. No, I'm, I'm giving y'all an order more. And so, women of God, stay with me. I know this is kind of out of your regular interest point, but I need you to stay awake, okay, because this is a spiritual concept. And so what the devil does is the devil wants us to get outside of our fortress. A.K.A. the presence of God. A.K.A. the community of believers. A.K.A. Isolation. I got I love you. I don't got to go to church. You're right. But when you don't go, you ain't in a company of believers. So now you're outside of your fortress. You see, he's a master deceiver. So he makes believers think that you're a strong enough warrior by yourself. You're right. But even Rambo got captured because he's merely just one man. No matter how strong you are up here, you are not strong enough to defeat a spiritual adversary by your mind alone. Amen. Oh, we'll get to that later on in the text. See, this is the thing. God has placed us in places of safety, but the devil wants to lead us out through things that catch our attention. 
You see, if I can make you leave your comfort zone and come outside, but when I placed outside for you, I can get inside. You see, if you're inside and you see me, you ain't coming outdoors. But if you don't see me and you see something you like, you're going to come outside and get what makes you feel good, and I'm going to sneak in through the back door. Yeah. Uh, 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 you ever heard of the Trojan horse? Let me just reiterate for those that's online versus watching. The Trojan horse. You see, the Trojan horse was a gift. Everybody likes gifts. <laughs> see, the Greeks thought that was good. They thought their enemies had left the battle because they saw them going away. But what they didn't see, somebody said they didn't see it. At nighttime, when they wasn't paying attention, the horse had been filled with Trojan soldiers. And so when they came out to inspect again, they didn't find no note. What no instructions? They said, this is a nice thing. They done left, and they done left us this gift. That's a sign of treaty. Deception number one. And when the devil wants to deceive you, he brings you something good. Y'all might want to write this down. Uh, 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 your first battle ain't going to come straight out. It's going to come after you get that gift he gave you. Yeah. Oh, I'm finna teach. It comes in that man you want. Oh, I got a man I was going to teach. It comes six foot six with a pretty smile, beautiful eyes, and dark skin. I mean, really nice. Can I teach? Oh, if you like white men, he come blonde hair, blue eyes, and got the little beautiful swirl. And when he goes like this, he just goes. Oh, I'm going to. Can I help you? But you know what's the problem with that man? He may profess God, but he don't really live like it. Yeah. Oh. It it, it, it start off like, yeah, baby, I respect your walk. Yeah, I'm cool with that. It's cool. I respect your walk. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all in. I love God too. I love God too. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with getting a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, 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 oh he's like, man, God ain't, God ain't gonna judge you. I mean, ain't nothing gonna happen to you if you drink just a little bit. It's just a little bit. God got me in the house. I'm in the right house. I'm in the right. Somebody said he in the right house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he like, I love Jesus, baby. I'm praying for you. You know, you know what's funny about praying for me? If you praying for me, you wouldn't tempt me with nothing that you know I'm struggling with. You know, how you really praying for me? And you know I used to deal with an addiction and sex. And then you come in here, you know, you know, not wearing no drawers with them great joggers on, walking around the house at 9 p.m. We both working against the fornication spirit and you showing temptation. How you praying for me? Your prayers are counterproductive with your actions. Oh, I'm going to teach. Let me tell you something, ladies. Uh, I ain't always been saved and sanctified. I know how the game go. So if I'm telling you something, I know about it. Yeah. <laughs> Ask my wife. I was the latest man. She couldn't stand it. I thank God for her patience. Because she made it. And we blessed God. That's why she got that beautiful rock on her hand. Yeah. Somebody say, be patient. Be patient. With the right one. With the right one. Right right Here we go. <laughs> okay, back to the charming horse. So the gift was on the beach, right? Yeah. And they what? rolled it off into the fortress. No, I mean, not a care in the world. They said, they didn't live. We had peace. We beat them because we outnumbered them. You're right. You did outnumber them. But your brain wasn't smarter than this because they tricked you. And see, since they deceived them, when they left this gift, they went and party because they thought they had the victory. So pay attention, people of God. Don't get so hyped about the devil not attacking you that you missed the attack that's coming. Can I help you? Because before the storm, there's always quiet. Yeah. Come on now. It's always peaceful. And then, Damn. what happened? You didn't see him coming. It's called your blind side. It was blind side. Oh, Lord. Come on. God, thank you. And so they opened up that thing. Them Trojan soldiers came out. I'm going to 
narrate this thing. And them Greeks was up in there celebrating and dancing and drinking. Oh, they were drunk. All the history books say it. They was drinking. And them Trojan soldiers went and had a little, a little, little bit of looking at They had not one piece of wine. They came about their whole single file. And let me tell you what they did. They understood that they were still outnumbered. So they didn't get so brave and rash that they went in and attacked them, although they was drunk and probably could have did it. You know what they did? They walked down there to them gates and they opened them up. And the soldiers that had been hiding all along rushed in. And the entire city fell and burned to the ground. Hear me, spiritually, the devil will give you a gift, and he knows that it's your weakness. And then when you get to celebrate it and forgetting your adversary, why your back is turned, he knocked your head off your shoulder. Why? Because you can't never turn your back on your enemy. Pay attention. Do not be deceived. Watch this. Because our weapons are extremely powerful, this is part of the reason why Satan doesn't want us to learn how to master them because if we did, we can overcome it. Right. I want to write it down. He knows how powerful those weapons are. So he doesn't want you to master spiritual warfare because if you master it, you can defeat it. Yeah. See, 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 see. Naturally, Satan is stronger than us. But when we master the art of warfare in the spirit, he ain't. Oh, God, I thank you. Yeah. Because, see, 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 when you put on your armor, it's fruits of the Spirit. And that means Holy Spirit's within you. So he's fighting for you. Amen. Amen. I, I yeah. so if you're awake, just say amen. You see, one thing I don't know about that devil is that he really ain't got as much power as he pretend to have. But as long as you don't know that, he's going to keep on playing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've had people say stuff like, uh, the devil, man, I'm going through a job season. Uh, the devil is tearing my finances up. You, you know why? Because you believe he has the right to do so. Let me help you. Job didn't have the Holy Spirit within him. We do. Let me help you. Job didn't understand how the blood of Jesus works because Jesus hadn't died yet. Let me help you. The stripes of Jesus couldn't help him because he didn't understand the concept. Job was the test dummy for what happens when you don't have protection. Now we got Christ Jesus. Come on. Don't compare yourself to a man who didn't have the amenities that you have. Don't talk to me about that old school TV that you had to have, Pops, because I got this new plasma that I get to have. You ain't have no HD in your day, so don't get mad at me because I got it. Just come over and watch it. Ask me, can you come over and watch the game with me? Don't be mad at me telling me about that black and white screen you had. That ain't my problem. I ain't got you to tell I got cable. Hello? So that's the same correlation. You got cable. You got flat screen. But you want the devil to trick you, making you think you got a downgrade to the classic black and white with an antenna to pick up three channels. <laughs> upgrade yourself. Somebody say upgrade yourself. Upgrade yourself. Hello. I love the You know, the women of God, they have some more than men too. My God, just keep on coming. Amen. <laughs> Verse number five. It says, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Let me break that down to you. <laughs> God, thank you. Okay, so this morning we had an incident. I ain't going to discuss it. But the incident was one of those things where intelligence can come in and perspective can come in, and that's what you call a sophisticated argument. Right. <laughs> and God broke it down to me in the car. But then let me show you, let me show you. He said to me, we have to destroy those sophisticated arguments. This is a problem for me because I'm an intelligent man. So when you come to me and I got to be intelligent, I get mad. I'm like, no, 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 because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just talking for me. And see, I know y'all women, I love y'all. <laughs> women, y'all love those sophisticated arguments. Yes. <laughs> I just don't understand how paragraph. <laughs> Baby, what you talking about? What? Three paragraphs. <laughs> and they all sophisticated arguments. You might misspell a little stuff if you're too mad, but you're sophisticated. I know. And it's actually scientifically proven that women are actually more mature and developed than men anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Uh, well, uh, maybe y'all don't know that about yourself yet. You can find out. So the thing is, though, all that sophisticated argument stuff got to go out the window. Why? Because that goes against the very knowledge of God. Why? Because God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah. So you have to take every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Because you know who else a smart circle? That devil. Yeah. And sometimes he uses our intellect against us because he make our flesh rise up when our spirit is supposed to be submissive. Yeah. People who usually 
come against the Bible are extremely intelligent. No, no, think about it. The ones who write books against how the Bible is false and man wrote this and King James did that and da da da. They ain't no dummies. They got good PhDs. But see, that's the thing. Put the next scripture on the screen. That's the thing right there. God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. What does that mean? What they don't know. God, I love your word. You see, it's not about the intellect they have. It's about the stuff that they don't know. And it may not be because they don't have access to it. It's because their intelligence clouds their better judgment. They'd rather be right than be saved. God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, revealing their frailty. Because see, the thing about strong people is they all got a weakness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I love you. And so what happened was Goliath was a giant, but David was a small boy. And so God used a tiny, tiny 17-year-old boy with no military experience to slay a seven-foot giant who... Who had all the military experience you can gather, and he had a history of taking people out. Why? Because God wanted to show his frailty. What was his frailty? His ignorance. Yes. No, no, no. Kiss it. Please write it down. His frailty was the fact that he was ignorant. Ignorant of what? How God really works. Because he thought natural strength can fight spiritual wars. Yes. See, he's ignorant to think that your brawn and your intellect will go against the spirit of God. Because, see, God was with David, and he wasn't with Goliath. See, if he had understood that, he would have just packed these bags up and went on home, but see, he didn't. And so his ignorance caused him to lose his life. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you lack knowledge, you're ignorant to something. You see, I can deal with ignorance because I can teach you if you're willing to learn. But I can't deal with stupidity because that means you know and you're still choosing to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. If you're awake, church, say that. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. Next thing. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? <laughs> Foolishness. Wait, say that with me. Foolishness to him. Hmm. Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Can I break that down for you? What that means is I don't expect unbelievers to understand what we're doing when we're talking in tongues. Because it's foolishness to them. It sounds like gibberish. Because they don't know that the Spirit of God talks to us in code and we can actually decrypt it. No, 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 I'm going to speak to the saints. Uh, I don't expect people that are carnal in their life to understand how powerful the blood of Jesus really is. Because they're like, it's just a dead man's blood. Yeah. But see, what you don't know, your ignorance, is that he ain't dead, he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal things to those who are willing to listen. This is why Jesus said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. And then in Revelation, he told John, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Why? Because you can't understand spiritual warfare until you come into alignment with the Spirit of God. Write that down. You cannot understand spiritual warfare until you come into alignment with the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is who implemented spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. Very good, Uh, See... Spiritual warfare is foolishness to people who don't know Jesus. Spiritual warfare is foolishness to people who don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because they're like, yeah, I'm going to rebuke it in Jesus' name. But you don't know how much power that name really carry yet. Yeah. You know, but you don't know. Oh, God, I always preach. Yeah. Because, see, back in the day, I knew, but I didn't know. Now that I'm a man, I really know. Because, see, now that I'm a man, I put away childish things. So everything that I thought was important then ain't important now. See, when I was a child, I was ignorant of how adulthood works. But when I became adult, <laughs> adulthood showed me how ignorant childish things really are. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away with me, saints. When you're in the world, you don't know how God's kingdom works. But when you get in the kingdom, it's your job and your leader's job to show you how the things of kingdom work. Because once you understand the principles of the kingdom, you can be effective. Yeah. If y'all awake, saints, say amen. Yeah. I know this is a lot, but we just get started. Amen? God is working. Let me give you a concept. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me give you a concept. People who don't understand voodoo don't work it, do they? Because they understand how powerful voodoo really is. Why is it that if voodoo is of the darkness of this world and the kingdom of darkness, why do we think we can come into the kingdom of God and not understand how powerful our weapons are? Because if you mishandle them, you'll test them up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had people pray against people not knowing they're praying against people. I said, don't pray that. That's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm about to wake y'all up now. See, you can't pray that somebody do something. You pray that God soften their heart. Let me help you. Because if you pray that somebody does something and then they do it, you just perform witchcraft because God didn't answer you in heaven. The God of this world performed your request because they are not under the Holy Spirit. So they are led in by their emotions. And anytime someone is led by their emotions, the devil can actually lead them and guide them because he doesn't honor free will. Only God the Father does. Amen. I hope y'all paying attention. So, so, so don't pray that that man fall in love with you because he might actually fall in love with you and that might not be the boat as God gave you. And now you're stuck in a bad relationship like he's beating your tail because the devil honored your request and it was never God's will for you. Yeah. That's how powerful spiritual warfare is. Yeah. When you don't know your weapons, you mishandle them. Yeah. See, when you never wielded a sword, you don't know that both sides are sharp. And so you think that one side cut, but you find out the other when you grab it by the blade. Yes. This is why the Bible is likened to the word of God as quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Why? Piercing and dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's what discerns you. And the joints and the marrow, meaning your bones and your flesh. And the thoughts and intents of the heart, meaning your ulterior motives that you don't even know yourself. Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? the word of God? Because Jesus is the word. Can I help you? I'm trying. I'm trying, Mom. Spiritually discern things. Somebody say spiritually discern. So I want y'all to do this. Just go like this. Go like this. Put your hand like this. Go like this. Now go like this. Put it on your eye. Put it on your eye. Put it on your spiritual glasses. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're gonna put these on for the rest of the ride. You know how you be in a movie and they be like, hey, 3D. Okay, hold well, on. I can't see it. They're moving too much. <laughs> oh wow, that's beautiful. That was how you do the spirit. Amen. I can't, can't help you. Because when y'all leave up out of here, y'all gonna be some warriors. Somebody say, I came in a problem. I came in a problem. I'm leaving out a sergeant. I'm leaving out a sergeant. You know why I said sergeant? Because sergeants teach the soldiers what to do. So when you leave up out of here, the manual is how you're gonna teach others how to be equipped for spiritual warfare. Basics 101. Let's go. Watch this. Write this down. Spiritual warfare is something that's always happening. I'm going to say that again. Spiritual warfare is something that's always happening. Let me help you. So it's not voluntary for you as a believer to learn it. You have to learn it in order to be successful as a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to help y'all. Uh, uh, you, know, you know how you clock into work and you know you got to shift from whatever, 10 to 2, yeah. 9 to 5, whatever, 11 to 6, whatever. When you clock out, you clock out. That's it. They don't need to be calling you about work because you ain't clocked in. Yeah. <laughs> don't call me. I'm off the clock. Don't talk. If you clock out at 602 and a customer call, what you say? I'm off the clock. Oh, hey, yo, somebody feel that. Don't talk. Hey, hey, well, hey, she can help you. Who that? He might have just clocked in. Still got sleep on your breath, but he's going to help you because I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me help you. As a Christian, you never clock out because as a Believer, you can't clock out. Because your adversary, he never clocks out. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. I, the devil ain't working over time. He just never stopped working. Yeah. Oh, God, I love you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you see, Christians clock in to Christianity. And when they clock out, the devil hit them. Yeah. No, 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 no. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Christians clock in on Sunday and then they clock out after they leave the church. Yeah. Oh, or maybe they let the word simmer the whole day and then when they clock in to work, they clock out of Christianity because the devil clock in at their job and then they forget who they are. Mm. Wow. Not 
Let, let, let me help you. Let me help you. See, when you clock out, he still clocked in. So see, his time step will reflect. And what that means is, the more hours he get, the more pay he get. And what that means is, the more up he get on you. Because what that means is, you'll check short. So now when you go to cash out from the ATM in the spirit, you ain't got no money. And the devil cashing out from his kingdom of darkness. So, 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 y'all ever play um, games that have weapons in them? Yeah, and you got to get money in order to get the upgrade. See, y'all go into the buy station. I'm going to help you call it duty terms. You go into the buy station with $500, but you got to have at least 1000 to cash anything out. Pay attention, stay with me. And so the devil, he's got an unlimited bank account because he's only cashing out the things that he controls. See, you can upgrade the things he can't, but he's always got what he got. So if you come in there with a pistol and he got an M16, I mean, fam, God bless you. <laughs> I mean, they're the same thing, but the thing is, it's a difference. A common pistol versus the M16. It's too much for him. Okay, let me help you. You come in with a pistol and he got that light machine gun. You got 16 rounds, he got 100. So I hope you hit him, because if you don't, he's still coming. And even if you hit him, it don't matter. Once you run out, he's still coming. And he might let you shoot off and fire him, because he's ducking and dodging. Why? Because he's the master deceiver. And so he blends in, and he acts like your comrade. <laughs> and he puts on war clothes that you recognize, yeah. And then he straps on that battalion that you recognize, yeah. Y'all are the same brigade, yeah. And so while you're up there discharging your firearm at his minions, he's standing right next to you. And he's discharging his firearm, because although he discharged 16 with you, he still got 84 more to go. And so while you you discharging your firearm at the distraction. You're not ready for the 84 that's about to unload in your spirit because he's right there next to you. You see, the thing is, he got to deceive you. And so when he deceives you, what you do is you think it's all good. And then you say, help me, I'm out. He goes, hold on, let me help you. And then here come the machine. Yeah. I'm out. Help me. He's like, here you go. And he lands you an empty clip. Help me. I'm out. He's like, don't worry about it. I got your back. Y'all back to back fighting. And then he's going to turn on you and do you just like Judas did Jesus and Brutus did Caesar because he's going to stab you right where it hurt. Why? Because he knows you never saw him to begin with. Because if you did, you would have been called him out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can I teach today? Please. See, I don't play, I don't play games with the devil. I got to put y'all on game because I can't have you knocking your head all off your body. I need you to know. So I say, I need to know. I need to know. This is good. My God. Holy Ghost in here. Wow. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Ghost in here. Romans 12, verse 2, A and P. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. Somebody say mature. Mature. Okay. By the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove yourselves, for yourselves, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Let me help you. We're going to break this thing down. Mature spiritually. Let me help you. When you first get saved, I don't expect you to know everything about spiritual warfare because you're a newbie. Yeah. I still got you in basic training. But once you come out of basic training... They, the test dummies, they shoot back because they real. Right. Now I'm about to teach this. To tell it. You see, you can practice a little bit because you got people helping you and covering you. But after basic training is done now, you got to really fight. Yeah. And see, this is the thing about the devil. He really don't care if you're a newbie or not. Because as a matter of fact, you just left his camp. So he really mad at you. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I got to wake y'all up. Let me help you. The devil... Is not your friend. Say it. The devil yeah, yeah. is He's not, not your friend. friend. Hello. I don't care what he's talking about. That joker is not your friend. Because let me let you know something. Even when you think he ain't working, he working. Yeah. So when you first get saved, you excited. <laughs> no, no, for real. Like they be running around the church. So yeah. you know they be like, I love Jesus so much. He's my boyfriend, my best friend. He's my lover, my life. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna say so. Single women, they swear Jesus they worth it. No, I'm saying like, no, it's just me and Jesus. No, sir, uh-uh. It's just me and Jesus. They be telling the boys, they do in the beginning. Get about three months down the line. They be like, I think it's me and Jesus. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, as I always say, I see it. I'm like, wait a minute. What happened to the fire, the thrill? The spice don't run. I know Jesus ain't got born. Because he ain't never born. So you got born. Ah, I found the problem. It's not him. It's not him. It's not him. It's me. What happened? You stop showing up to your dates. Wow. Hey, Come on you stop now. showing up to your dates. Yeah. Catch the spiritual drift. You stop showing up to your dates. Your quiet time. You stop
stop showing up to your days, your prayer time. You stop showing up to your days. Ah, you stop answering your phone when he calls and speaks to you. You disregard him for something else that's appealing at the moment. You stop showing up to your days. Jesus ain't the problem. You are. See, that's not in my notes, but it's called Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? So you got to mature spiritually. What does that mean? By renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Look here, women of God. Even if you got some sass, that's great, but you still got to surrender that to God. Because you got to be sassy for the right reason, not the wrong reason. Yeah. You got to be sassy against the devil, not against your fellow brothers and sisters. Because too much sass means I ain't got no help. No, no, let me help you. You tick off the right person, and then now you ain't got no spiritual help. Because you might have ticked off your destiny helper, and now they ain't praying for you. So here come that opening in the head, and here come the devil. Yeah. Hello. If you're awake, say amen. Amen. Watch me. So that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose. For you, somebody say for me. for me. You see, God wants us to grow spiritually, not for Him. He in heaven. He good. He talking about for you. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me? You know how I feel that. Say, you know, for a while I was like, God, I don't want to go in ministry, but I know you want me to do it. He was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I want you to do it because I know your potential and your purpose, but you're doing this for you because you won't reach your full purpose until you figure out your purpose in me. So if you want to live a mediocre life, so go ahead. Wow. It changed my perspective. Then it went no longer, that in my church, in my ministry, I hear folk, wait, look here, we ain't going to do that. This is God's church. Amen. We ain't doing that. This is his ministry. I, I'm just an overseer. So be real. You ain't got to like, I'm going to tell him. He's going to talk to you. That's why I speak the truth without being unadulterated, being unadulterated and unfiltered. Why? Because if I filter God's word, I'm filtering God's message, and somebody ain't going to get the full extent of what needs to be said. And then now you can't mature because I done babied you. Amen. Yeah, you drink milk when you come in, but when you get the best of baby, after I get you off that bottle, he go stay in for lay in your I got to help you out. Amen. The meat. You need the meat? Somebody say, this meat. This meat. This ain't milk. This ain't milk. No. It's really not. I'm going to help you. You need to know his plan and purpose for you. Now let's go look at the next definition of what a wild is. To lure by or as if by a magic spell. I got to read my word for this. Because I'm going to teach. Minister, you know what's funny about this definition, the second definition? When I read it, it said to lure by or as if by by a magic spell, but it never changes the connotation of the magic spell. And I said, God, what does that mean? <laughs> and he gave me this. He said, write it down. You ready to write? If Satan can't deceive you into his way of thinking, he'll just try and force you into his way of thinking. Oh, this is different. If he cannot deceive you into his way of thinking, he's just trying to force you into his way of thinking. I'm going to elaborate. Let me help you understand what a spell means. A spell is a spoken word or form of words held to have magic power. Also, a spell is a state of enchantment. Do you know what enchantment means? Yeah. You in La La Land because you think everything is bliss. Next thing, it's a strong, compelling influence or what? Attraction. No, y'all gonna say that. It's a strong, compelling influence or what? Attraction. Attraction. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got it. I found it. Y'all seen that video when, when the fish was about to break in? They said, ladies and gentlemen, we got it. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got it. You know what he's doing? If he can't trick you into being deceived, he speaks words. That carry power. But if that don't phase you, then he tries to get you in a state of bliss so you forget he's out there. But if that don't stop you, he just comes with attraction, something you like. Influence. People that you respect. People whose opinion matters. Now they put you under a spell. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm going to help you understand. What he does is, enchantment can't come unless they come through gateways. What you hear yep. 
what you see, I hate to say it like this, it may sound provocative, but even what you taste. Wow. Because some spells don't work unless somebody eat the food that got the spell in it. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Yeah, you better do your research. Amen. Yes. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, y'all background, y'all know y'all family, y'all be, yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> don't play stupid now. Y'all know. Okay, so gateways. My mouth, my ears, my eyes. That's why the three monkeys was holding everything. They said, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I never forget that Chinese proverb because of this. The devil comes through what I'm looking at because I can go through lust in my spirit based on what I looked at. I can become fearful based on what I'm looking at. Oh God, I'm going to help you. I can become intimidated based on what I'm looking at. I can begin to doubt God based on what I'm seeing right now in front of me. I can begin to lose heart because I don't see God showing up right away. I can begin to lose heart because I don't hear God as legibly as I heard him in the beginning of my walk. I can begin to lose faith because when God speaks to me in a, in a tangible force, I don't even hear God speaking through that person because I don't necessarily like them. When God, oh God, I, think you, I, I, I begin to uh, take in things in my body that have been sacrificed to idols. I know y'all know about that, but that's okay. Uh, see, you got to be mindful about certain foods you eat from certain people because some people worship certain spirits and they sacrifice their stuff to those spirits. So when you eat that stuff, word of God and prayer might cover you in ignorance, but once you know, word of God and prayer ain't covering you. I'm telling you, look, I don't eat at everybody's crib. Let me tell you now. Because I'm so glad, Minister Tyler, that we diversified and got so many nationalities, but some of them folk be operating in doctrines of yeah. devil, and you ain't finna trick me. Yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> I got to tell you how it is. Yeah, what it is. So, uh, you know, like, be mindful. Because, uh, you know, like, some folk, they got different background, heritage, and this thing. Just monitor what people be doing in their spirit time. Because if you look at their fruit, you're going to know them. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm about to speak. How long before we go to that next thing? You know what? Matter of fact, let's go to that next thing. What's this say? Satan uses bait to cast spells. It's always what we like. It's never what we don't like. Many times, the thing that you don't want to do is what God's telling you to do. Let me tell you why. Because Deacon, our flesh don't like it, but our spirit needs it. God, like, look, you got to cut them out. They don't mean no good. I know y'all got five years in, but look, they're snake. They didn't turn snakey now. It's not snake. 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 Oh God, I'm thinking. Oh God, speaking to me. Some of you are harboring people that have had a spiritual metamorphosis, and you didn't realize when they changed. I'm gonna say that again. Some of you are harboring friendships, relationships where they have metamorphosis into something different and you're still holding on to their beginning stage but their stage currently no good for you <laughs> and when that happens sister Kwanzaa you know what the Lord told me he said that spiritually harboring a fugitive mm. Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh God I love you and so that can put you under a spell because now the devil's controlling them. So when you're influenced by them or attracted to them, he can now control you like a puppet. I told you, if he can't deceive you, he got to force you into his way of thinking. He makes you adapt to his mindset. Not every thought you think is of yourself. Sometimes it's the devil. Yes. Hello. I don't know why I feel that way toward my friend. I love my friend. I know you do, but the devil don't. And he's trying to isolate you from your destiny. Yeah. Okay, next topic. Watch this. Example. Young men and beautiful women. Let me help you. Samson successfully deterred from his destiny by the Delilah. Here's the problem, though. Delilah was the last straw. It wasn't the first. Amen. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm about to help somebody. Yeah. See, if you look at the text, you'll see that Samson was always attracted to the women. So he had a woman problem already. Delilah just happened to be the end for him. But he could have got stopped at the beginning if he had to listen to God. Yes. Oh God, I'm about to preach. <laughs> See, Samson had a problem when he was slaying lions with jawbones. 
I mean, tripping them with his bare hands. Then he picking up jawbones of donkeys and killing enemy soldiers. He had a woman brought him in. But gifts and callings are without repentance. See, he needed to repent of that lust spirit and that fornication he was doing back then. But see, this is the thing, though. Because nobody actually called him out on it, he didn't feel it was necessary. There's a danger in not having friends. Because when I look in scripture, I saw Samson by himself a lot. And so he didn't have two better than one. It was just one. What I would like to believe is that his parents probably told him, don't be messing with the Philistine girl. But when he became a man, he was like, look, I do me, mom. I, I love your dad. It's okay, mom. I'm, I'm the strongest man in all the of earth. You know, I'm good at so right? No one can trap me. If they were, this is what he thought. If they run up on me while I'm messing with her, I'm going to kill him anyway. But what he didn't understand was, you didn't even worry about the man running up on you because of the woman. You need to worry about that spirit in the woman that's trying to take your strength. Modern day. Uh, uh, what God said to you, people of God, is that you need to be mindful of people that's always draining you. Because if you feel drained physically, imagine what your spirit feels. Some of the conversations are orchestrated by the devil himself. Too much talk will drain you. Because when I talk too much, it begins to turn into ungodly conversation. And that's unprofitable for the body. If you're awake, say amen. Next thing, hold on, let me put it on. Back up, hold on. Joseph was a failed attempt. You see, Potiphar's wife tried to do the same thing to Joseph that Delilah did to Samson, but it didn't work. Somebody say it didn't work. Yeah. Why? Because here's the difference. Samson, God revealed it to me. Samson got so cocky in his anointing that he started missing his dates with Jesus. He missed his dates with God. And so as he began to miss dates, his deserving got weak. But Joseph, all he had was God. See, there's a difference. See, 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 see. Joseph was in captivity, so he didn't want to be friends with his oppressors. He only wanted God because he wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Oh. And so God was his best friend because that's all he had. And so his discernment was super strong. And so he said, ain't no way I'm about to let this woman from a foreign land trick me out of my inheritance in God because you're coming up here flaunting yourself. The devil is a lie. And you know what happened? You know what happened? She fell, and then he got thrown into prison. But he was dead for purpose. Somebody say for purpose. Because when he got out, he got a straight line directly to the king. If he had never went to prison, he would have never got to Pharaoh. Prison, sometimes. Isolation, healthily. Healthy isolation, sometimes. It's just procurement to the kingdom, to the royalty. To the places where you're supposed to be. Because God can't take you there unless he cut off everybody you don't need. You see, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies once he removes my enemies from the table. I'm really trying to teach. Woman of God, like, baby, I'm really trying to teach. Can I? I'm trying to go off. Uh, 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 hold on, we got another one. Hold on. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. God told me. He said, both... Samson and Joseph had an anointing. Uh, both of them had purpose, but, but, but the difference between both of them is that Samson's life got cut short because his discernment fell off, and Joseph lived a long life because his discernment was strong. And the difference between the two was not that they came from two different tribes or that because God favored one over the other, but because their commitment to God was different. They both recognized spiritual warfare, but only one of them took it serious. Samson understood when the devil came in a form, he understood Philistine enemies. But Joseph understood when the devil came in a form of attraction, what he really liked. Because what I would like to believe is that, see, back in the day, the Egyptians didn't marry no but ugly women. They married pretty women. So what I would like to believe is that Potiphar's wife had a seducing spirit, but she also was good to look at. And so she came in the form of something Joseph liked, and he had to be strong enough to say, no, this goes against not only my master, but against God in heaven. See, this is what God wants y'all to understand. It's not about what man sees. It's about what he sees. The first thing about spiritual warfare is that you have to defend against the enemy when nobody is watching, not just when your pastor looking. Don't cuss in front of the saints, and don't cuss when you're with the people that do cuss. Now see, now see, I'm, now see, I ain't trying to be in nobody's business. God has got me talking. Now see, can I help you? Yeah. Look, look, if you wouldn't do it in front of your pastor, don't do it in front of your friends. Yeah. 
No, now I'm helping you. If you wouldn't do it in front of Jesus, why you do it in front of your mom and them? Just because mom and them did it, mama might be the reason why you got generational curses and familiar spirits following you anyway. Yeah. Now I'm going to teach. Okay, let's think. <laughs> Baby isn't always a person. Sometimes it's a position or an opportunity that's not from God, but we desire it. Write it down, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it's a position or an opportunity that we are desiring, but it didn't come from God. <laughs> Let me help you. Let me help you. Romans 8 verse 5, NIV, explains it. Wait, hold on. Don't go there because I think they're right. I know they're right. That's <laughs> Let me pause right there. Deacon, temperature check in the room. It's hot in here. Wait, not for me. Not for you? No. I feel hot for real. I think it's the stage lights, but the Holy Ghost in here. Can y'all put like another ear? Maybe one more down. Turn that one on. We just go. We go bless God. Amen. Amen. Y'all good? Y'all good? Amen. You good? You cold? My goodness, so it is me. That's the Holy Ghost. My bad. Okay. Romans 8, verse 5. Y'all ready? Yes. Y'all good? Say amen. Amen. Okay. Verse 5. Y'all be. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Sometimes Satan trick us because it's not from God, but we desire it. So that means that the wrong desire will cause me to be deceived. Mm, yeah. No, no. That, spiritual warfare one-on-one. You have to learn to let God ordain your steps and order your desires. Because what happens is God wants the best for you. Satan wants the worst for you. But in order to make you get the worst, he got to deceive you like it's the best. Not every promotion is from God. Amen. Not every raise is from God. You know, some of you, the devil trying to get you a raise and a promotion at your job because God is trying to get you out of your job and make you go somewhere else that's better for you right now in this season. And the devil's like, let me give you a raise because if I give them more money, they're going to stay. It's warfare one-on-one because if I can trick you to stay a little bit longer, whatever I've got intended for the attack I'm bringing to that place, you stuck because you stayed. Some of you need to get ghosts. On some of those assignments and some of those things. God that told you to leave. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying rain. Some of you need to leave. He, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you need to. Some of you need to leave. You might want to. Because if you stay a little longer, it's called doomsday. You're catching. Okay. God's giving me all of this. I got to keep going. Okay. The wrong desire will cause you to be deceived. Now let's go back to Ephesians 6 verse 12 in the New King James Version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now look at this. Ephesians 6 verse 12. We're going to break this thing on down now. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against prince, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Excuse me, AIDS. I'm so King James. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Stop right there. King James version says spiritual wickedness in high places. Not spiritual hosts. It says spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, me and Mother Claus are talking about this, and the boy we talking about this. This is the funny thing about this. You might want to write this down. Spiritual wickedness in high places can be spiritual and physical. I'm about to elaborate. I'm about to elaborate. I promise before God I'm about to elaborate. Spiritual wickedness in high places can be spiritual and physical. That's why we got to read different translations. And let me help you. Let me tell you why. Because spiritually, it's talking about the devil, the demons. But physically, it's talking about people in a place of authority. They have demonic spirits ruling them like a puppet. And now that's why we see injustice. That's why. That's why people can have knees on an innocent man's neck, no matter what color he is. But yes, a black man. And he dies and nothing be done unless we test some up and things go out of whack. Why? Because it's been going on because there's a spirit in those places of authority. You see, the protest is good, but if I protest and don't pray, it really don't mean nothing. I got to help you. I really got to help you. If I can't help you with modern day events, what's the point of reading the Bible? Hello. See, what's happening is man is looking at the outward appearance, but God is looking at people's heart. Can I help you? So, it ain't a race thing. It's a spirit thing. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Let me tell you what a principality really is. A principality comes from the Latin word, and it means the territory or jurisdiction of a prince. Now, what is Satan? The prince of the power of the air. Hey, we got some saints in here. And so, if he's the prince of the power of the air, he has princes in his kingdom, and they're called strong men. Racism is a strong man. Yes, yes. Lust is a strong man. Amen. Oh, I'm about to help y'all. Greed is a strong man. Injustice is a strong man. You see, strong men, they have power over the demons under them. So when I see symptoms of something, I need to find who's the root. Oh, y'all yeah, about to help y'all. <laughs> oh, God, I'm thinking. Wait, wait. So... Racism actually is not the strong man. Hatred is. Yes. Because Cain hated his brother, then he killed him. No, I got to help y'all. We're going to kill these myths. See, see, see. The Lord spoke to Cain and said, Cain, why has your countenance changed? And Cain, he told him what? He said, if you do good, you will be received and accepted as well. But if you do evil, sin is knocking at your door, waiting to subdue you. And he said, you must overcome it. Watch me. But what Cain did was he didn't check the jealousy at the door. So jealousy turned into hatred. And then hatred turned into murder. Yeah. Yeah. It's all spiritual. Somebody say, it's all spiritual. It's all yeah. spiritual. Don't put nothing else up on the screen. So I'll put it there, okay? Strong man. What is a strong man? One who leads and controls by force of will. Hold on. Wait a minute. Stop right there. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Read that back. Strong man, read it with me. One who leads or controls by force of will and character. Stop right there. See, God is the God of free will, but Satan is the God of this world, and he don't care about your free will. He don't care about none of that. If he sees the opportunity to control you, he will. Right. Yeah. So, Squad, let me help Nobody in their right mind want to kill themselves. Amen. But when the spirit of suicide takes over somebody, it sounds good to blow your head off. Amen. You can call the one they have to hide now all you want to, but we need to deal with that devil trying to take your mind. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now see, when you talk like this, some folk don't like it. And you know what? It's a spirit in them too. No, because see, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Strong man, by force of will and character. Watch this. Or, 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 by military methods, warfare. See, strong men control your will and they do spiritual warfare. So if you let your will be controlled and you don't know spiritual warfare, fam, you lose it. Every time. Every time. Hello, because God told us, he said, our weapons are not physical. And he told us what kind of battle we faced in. You see, that's why I call it the warrior's manual, because I got to give you everything you need to know before I send you back out there. Some of you love God a lot, and that's not why you're losing. You're losing because you don't understand the aspect of spiritual warfare. So I pray that after this, you get something, and you can beat that devil. Yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, we bless God. Oh, we bless God. My goodness. Let me go back to the enchantment of the spells. If he can't control you by deception, he introduces you to spells and enchantment, and now he's controlling your will. Can I help you out real quick? Personal testimony. You see, I loved God. I did. When I was in our calling days. But I loved God as long as God didn't interrupt what felt good to me. And the reason why that was, was because my will was no longer my own. I had played with the devil so long that he finally had controlled my will. And so even when I didn't want to have sex outside of marriage, I did it anyway. And it would be mad afterward because I said, dang, why I can't control and discipline myself? And I didn't get this, get this one thought. But the thing is, the devil controlling you, man. See, 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 see. But see, boy, let me tell you what I didn't do. What I didn't want to do is I didn't understand the whole thing about the spiritual warfare, but I also didn't want to give it up because it felt too good. And see, what the devil does is he controls people based on their desires, minister. It's not that they don't want to change, but they like the sin more than they want to be free. So the sin is going to continue to control. Right. Yeah. Good. Mother, this is good teaching right here. Uh, 
You ain't got to take nobody hostage that want to go with you freely. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Hostages are people that don't want to be here. Deacon. My wife is not a hostage. Okay, she loves me. She want to be with me. Are you understand? I love you. Okay, okay. Uh, so when you love the sin, you love the devil by default. Plot twist. You don't love sex. You do. But the one who implemented sex outside of marriage is the devil anyway. People that hate people say they're Christian, they love God. No, you don't. The Bible said that you are a servant of your father, the devil. You're children of your father, the devil, because you got hate y'all, and God is love. God said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. And you know what? It's not that they ain't Christian. It's not that they don't love God. They love hating people more than they hate loving God. Yeah. See, I got to break this thing down to y'all. See, huh, let me help you. One plus one equals two. Say it with me. One plus one equals two. Okay, okay, okay. Loving sin plus loving God equals stealing bondage. Amen. Amen. Oh. Wanting to be delivered plus loving God equals freedom. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let me help you. What's got to happen is you have to understand how drastic the repercussions of certain things can be before you realize how deadly it is for you. See, some things we don't understand. Mother Quans, I'm going to tell you what it is. Right? See, when I was growing up, my mom told me. She said, son, again, remember what she told me? She said, there's always someone smarter than you, someone better looking than you, someone stronger than you, right? And I got it because at the time, I didn't value my own self-worth. But when I got older, the spirit of arrogance hit me, and realistically, I didn't care about that day because I thought it was the best thing walk. Let me help. What I didn't get, though, was that just because I forgot about the truth doesn't mean that the truth wasn't still true. Amen. And I actually got myself into predicaments that if I had to remember my mother's proverb, I wouldn't have got myself into. One time, the re God, thank you. I actually caught my felony because I tried to outwit somebody who was not actually necessarily smarter than me, but they had planned out something that I was about to do. And I was so arrogant that I thought I could overcome it. And that's how I caught my felony. No, you know, you know, it it take it take it take guts to be able to admit when you was dead wrong, yeah. and I was. So let me help you in spiritual warfare. The only way to be successful in learning the manual is to understand that your current knowledge of the manual don't really mean nothing right now. You gotta relearn. Somebody say I gotta relearn. I gotta relearn. Hello, somebody. Whew. Next thing. God gives us free will. Somebody say God gives us free will. God gives us free will. And Satan doesn't. Satan doesn't. Next thing, put it online. Satan doesn't, write it down. Satan does not honor our free will. When we submit to his authority via continuous sin, he takes full advantage of the situation. These types of sermons get you run out of certain churches. Thank God I'm going to see <laughs> Look at this. When we submit to his authority via continuous sin, he takes full advantage of the situation. Notice. He don't care if you meant well. He's just happy that you gave him a foothold. He don't care if you really want to serve God. He's just happy you gave him an avenue. And so he takes control of the situation once you give him authority. See, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and then he flees. So if you submit to the devil, when you resist the devil, he ain't going nowhere. Because you invited him in, so he finished stay. He good. He can get his feet up. Uh, what was that movie Tyler Perry now? Uh, just came out with. He was like, go get my, uh, my, my cigarette lighter or go get my uh, ashtray. He used some very expensive words. Okay, what I said. But you know what that was? She invited that joker in there. So he said, you know what? I'm not leaving now. That's how the devil did. He told her what she was going to do in her house. That's how the devil did. Wow. Yeah, I'm about to help you. He told her you want it mine. That's how the devil did. Come on now. He told her, you ain't nothing. You what I say you are. That's how the devil Come on now. I'm about to help y'all. Somebody need to say, devil, devil. Get, out get out of my house. Oh, yeah. 
I want y'all to feel it in your spirit. Say, devil! Devil! You're not welcome here. You're not welcome here. Devil! Devil! My body! My body! It's the temple! It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Get out! Get out! In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, I thank you. Let's break this thing on down. We're about to hit the checklist. Ephesians 6, verse 13 through 18, NLT version. I love it. We switched the verses. Now watch this. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Hold on. Still be standing firm. Watch it. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I love this one right here. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Y'all ready for the checklist? I'm about to break this thing on now. Warriors checklist. Number one, the character of God, a.k.a. the armor. Your armor is merely God's character. So the closer you get to God, the more secure your armor is. Put that next part up here. I want y'all to write. I'm not going to go fast because I want y'all to get this. The characteristics of God are part of our new nature, but they're also part of our armor. Notice. Righteousness, peace, faith, truth, salvation, and the word of God. Because it says out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. And that comes from the word because it says when a man blesses the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right? I take out my piece, right? But I'm going to, I'm going through it because I need you to understand. His delight is in the law of the Lord. What's the law? The word. The written word. So the characteristics of God are also part of our new nature, but they're part of the armor. So when you get God's character embedded, you know, downloaded into your spirit, now it, it flows out of you. What happens is as the word flows out and the character of God becomes your character, you stay equipped. So it's never a time when you're lacking. See, let me help you. I want to break spiritual warfare down to you. I know I had to give y'all a lot of complexity because I had to give you to understand the seriousness of this thing. But what you need to understand is that God has broken it down so simple, it is like a baby could do it. Let me help you. Why? Because if God is in me, I don't have to try too hard to be like God. All I got to do is listen to him. Yeah. Minister, let me help you. Let me help you. Okay. See, if I listen to God... Then he'll lead me and guide me into all truth. John 16 said it. Holy Spirit will lead me and guide into all truth. So now the nature of God becomes my first nature, not my second nature. So that means I'm always equipped. Somebody say, I'm always equipped. I'm always equipped. Okay. Y'all got this done? Next thing. Number two. Pray in the spirit slash prayer. Prayer in the spirit slash prayer. Next thing. Fighting spiritual enemies requires spiritual prayer as well as physical prayer. Now, let me break that down for you. Okay? The Bible says in verse number 18, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. When I wrote this part, fighting spiritual enemies requires spiritual prayer as well as physical. What I meant by that is, you got to, see, when you get the Holy, you know, today is the day of Pentecost. When you get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit pray for you. You got to pray in tongues. You got to tongues. You got to pray in tongues. You got to let the Spirit pray through you, not just your natural mind. Because your natural mind might miss something, but the Holy Spirit won't. You need both of them. Hello. My, my natural mind be like, God, I thank you for my wife and for my children. Cover us, keep us in the name of Jesus. And then Holy Spirit goes, pray for your unborn. Mm -hmm. No, I'm about to pray. I got to help you. Your natural mind might say, God, thank you for my mother and my father, and I pray that you restore our relationship. And then the Holy Spirit says, and I pray against every familiar spirit of division that's been trailing my family tree. Yeah. Yeah. See, you need both of them. Because your natural mind, when listening to the Holy Spirit, they attacked him. Sometimes you got to tag yourself out and tag in the Holy Ghost. Number three. The mind of Christ. I love this one. <laughs> oh, we bless you, God. 
The mind of Christ. Number three. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16, NKJV says what? But we have the mind of Christ. I want you to say it and let it get into your spirit. You ready? But we have the mind of Christ. Do you believe that? Yes. Let me help you. Now that Christ's mind is your mind and you claim that, what happens is that when the money thoughts hit your head, Christ will be able to discern what's from him and what's not from him. And he'll tell you, what do you do then? You cast them down. Let me help you. If you know that you've been delivered from the profanity spirit and the curse words hitting your head, first thing you need to do is see if you've been watching some curse words on TV and it got in your eyes or your ears. Then you need to check your stereo or your phone, your Apple Music, your Spotify, your SoundCloud, your YouTube, whatever, and see if there's some curse words, profanity coming through that. Then you need to check your circle around you to see if there's some curse words coming through that. Because if that's not the case, the devil's sending you curse words. The saints is real quiet minister. Okay, but now you still got to cast those thoughts down. So when he calls somebody out their name in your head, you say, I, 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 I. I got the mind of Christ. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I am not cussing. I'm delivered. Hello. Because, see, the thing is, if you never address your adversary, he thinks you're afraid of him. As a matter of fact, he knows you are. That's why you ain't addressing him. So when you start addressing him, he goes, Call him out. Call him out. Call him out. What I do? Oh, sucker, that dirty devil. Let me tell you, that's what I do. I talk filthy to the devil because I don't respect him. Not one bit of me respects him. And the reason why I don't respect him is because you got to be a low down, dirty dog that got to try to trick people into following you straight into hell. So I don't respect him. My job is to make sure the saints understand who he is and that he ain't got no power. So, uh, again, affirmation. <laughs> I love this part. Say it. Say, Satan. Satan. You really ain't got no power. See, I need y'all to understand that. Number four, let me tell you what I just did. Knowledge and application of the word. See, when you know the word, you can apply it. See, my Bible tells me greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. So I know that, and then I apply it by making y'all say it with me. Because I know it. So now he can't stop me. I know it. I don't care what he talking about. He can say, you remember your past? Yeah, I remember it. And you know what else I remember about it? I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. So every time I talk about how God brought me out from under you, you get overcome some more. <laughs> oh, I love the word. Look at this. Psalms, put it on screen. 119 verse 9 through 11 says, How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let me break that down for you. Watch this. So living according to the word is application. But having the word hidden in your heart is knowledge of the word. Because see, Satan wants to deceive you by making you think sin is not sin. So when you know the word, it deserves the thoughts and intents of your heart and tells you when the devil is trying to trick you. Because not everything you feel is of God. Not everything you think is of God. Not everything you've been taught was of God, is of God. Amen. So when you know the word, you hide it in your heart, and that's how you don't sin against God. And then by living according to the word, you're applying the word. So now you're seeking God, and you won't stray from his word. Yeah. See, God, I thank you. God just dropped this in my spirit. Most of you, y'all love me, He told me all of you. All of you love God, but many of you have been deceived to think that this Christian walk is hard. When really it's actually simple. The devil's trying to trick you. Wow. It actually is harder to do evil because you've got to keep covering up the sin you're doing. And you've got to lie to yourself to make yourself feel good about stuff you know that's actually wrong. Oh my God. Amen. Yeah, who's special? Who's special? Who's special? <laughs> Hello. See, devil, I told you. I'm finna trick you. I'm finna trick you. Everything you use against the saints, I'm going to use it against you. Yeah. So yeah, it ain't actually difficult. It's actually quite simple. 
You know, it's easier to tell the truth than it is to lie, Sister Brittany. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. when you lie, you got to remember the lie, then you got to lie again the same way you lied the first time, then you got to try to tell another lie to cover up the lie you told to begin with, then you got to remember who you lied to so that you make sure you continue to say that same lie to those people. It's very yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's easier to love than it is to hate, right? You know how I know that? Because babies love everybody, and they don't even be knowing. Yeah. But when somebody's spirit ain't right, babies don't like it. Come on now. Because they're innocent. And the spirit of God, they don't say, uh-uh, no good, no good. No good. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. <laughs> Some of y'all need to become childlike in your approach to the, to the life of God. You need to say, wait a minute, uh-uh, I can't do that. Bad, bad, bad. I gotta stay right here. Yeah. You talk too much, mm -mm, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> See, everybody's application is different, Mister. So some folk need the remedial thing, some folk need the elementary, some folk need God to talk to them in dissertations and say, this is iniquity. What, <laughs> fam, it's sin. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to take. I don't care what you call it, but just know it. Don't do it. Yeah. Okay. Next thing. Number four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Demons are afraid of Jesus. Come on now. Whether they're afraid of you depends on how well you know Jesus. Hallelujah. Because that's what determines your intimacy with him. Yeah. Wow. See, when you rebuke something in Jesus' name, demons only go if they recognize that you have authority from it because you actually know it. Come on now. Oh, God, I thank you. See, Amari is one of my spiritual daughters, and so when she say, Pastor said, people trust her because they know she really know me. But some people say, Pastor said, and my staff don't trust them because they say they don't even talk to the pastor. I know they ain't telling the truth. Come on now. It's the same way with God. When you really know God, you can tell that they'll get here. I ain't messing with you. Get from me in the name of Jesus. And they're like, wait a minute. They really know Jesus. They got a relationship with Jesus. Damn. Because let me tell you something. In the spiritual realm, you can't see it. But in the spiritual realm, y'all got ranking. Come on now. And Speak. the devil can see all of your ranks. Yeah. It's displayed above your head. Come on now. <laughs> you know what else is up there? How intimate you are with the master. Amen. And so, when you go into spiritual warfare, sometimes the devil take a little longer because he know you ain't been spending quality time with Jesus. Come on now. So he trying you up. He trying you up. And he's successful because you ain't spending enough time. But the more you get close to God, mm, God, I love your word. That small stuff they used to tear you up, now you be like, man, look, man, we ain't going Look, sometimes I don't even rebuke the devil. I just say, I'm not doing that. And then I walk off. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in me is saying, look, we're not doing that. And he got to shut up. You got to understand your authority. Dominion is given to man because man is connected to God by default. And when man disconnects, Satan the trick. Yeah. Come on now. Speak. Ain't no such thing as it's me by myself. The devil is a lie. He done tricked you. Eternity is in the heart of man. What is eternal? God. Who is eternal? God. So if eternity is in you, God by default is within you and he's waiting on you to connect the blood. Amen. Lord. Don't worry. Next month's series is called The Death of Man. I'm going to run over all of that. I got you. We're going to discover who we are, why we are who we are, our purpose, why we're not who we're supposed to be yet. What is, oh God, I got you. Yeah. I, I got you. So I say he got us. He got us. Amen. Because God got you. Amen. Amen. Reference, I'm going to reference Hosea 4.6. God said, my people are destroyed for not lack of knowledge. I'm going to put it on screen yet. And the problem with that is that when you don't know the word, you can't apply, so you can't come back to the devil. Yeah. Also, in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh, and the word among us. What does that mean? So the closer I get to Jesus, the more word I know. So now I can combat every single lie the enemy throws at me with the truth, because I know it. Y'all can't look at the Bible as just a book. No, no, no. The word is the written word, the Bible, and the omega, right? The beginning and the end. Who is that? The living word. Yes. Jesus. Jesus is the living word. So the written word and the living word go together because they're the same. They're one and the same. So when Christians tell me, I don't be reading my Bible, you know, because man wrote that, I'll be like, fam, you only get one part of the word. So don't worry. When the devil starts beating your head in, you look at it. <laughs> man, so don't I say, they know I'm wrong, huh, Kim? I'm telling you the truth because I love you. I'm trying to say you so. Next thing, number five, the blood of Jesus. Ah. Hey, 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 hey,
talking about that. I'm about to get that good reverend while I rouse up. You heard it? The blood of Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. The blood of Jesus. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what the blood does. The blood carries healing. Isaiah 53, verse 5. By his stripes we are healed. The blood carries cleansing power. First John 1, verse 9. When I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. What else it carry? It carries redemption. First Peter 1, verse 18 through 19. Because we know that Jesus is our redeemer and we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. What else it carry? Protection. In Exodus 12 and Luke 22, we understand we're protected and covered and sealed oh by the blood. I'm trying to tell you. So the blood of Jesus, run it up, is also a weapon. Amen. Hallelujah. See, I got a revelation of the blood. Can you tell me? I got a revelation. When I fight the devil in prayer, oh, that's the same. They be on the prayer line. They be a person at the prayer meetings. What I say, the blood of Jesus is against you. When people first say, hey, the blood of Jesus is against you. What? <laughs> Let me tell you something. The blood don't just heal you, cleanse you, redeem you, protect you. The blood strike the devil in his head. Oh, come on now. Because see, the blood has never lost it its power. power. Come on. That blood ran down from that cross, struck the ground. Let me help you. God just gave it to me just now. I promise you, just now. It's not in my notes. God said to me that if Abel's blood cried from the ground, when I died, my blood cried too. And so when Jesus' blood cried from the ground, the Father said, that's enough. It is finished. And he ripped that veil and said, I will never again allow my people to be separated because of sin without giving them an avenue to be redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank God for the blood. Because I'm using that weapon. I wield that thing like nunchucks. Come on now. I'm on the devil here every day. Come on now. I can't stand it. And he didn't know it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. Oh, God, I'm trying to tell you something. Closing passage, Revelation 12, verse 11. Look at this. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the, by the word of their testimony. You know what's so important about that? If the blood went a weapon, it couldn't overcome it. But it is. So since it is a weapon, whenever I feel low, I just say, God, feel me afresh. Because when he feels me, the blood that ran through his veins gets deposited in me spiritually. And see, you now. don't see that process, but you feel it. And when the devil try to make you feel weak and weary, all you got to do is say, God, I thank you for the blood that heals me. And sometimes healing don't just come to your physical body. It comes to your mental too. Come Some of you have been going through problems in your mental space. And God is saying to you today that if you just plead the blood of Jesus against that mental depression, against that mental anxiety, against that mental illness, what's going to happen is the blood going to Wash your memory dry clean, and God will deposit some fresh in you, and you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Then you can testify about how the blood heals you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost with this. I feel the Holy Ghost. See, 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 see that blood. You can plead the blood of Jesus against the devil in the middle of the night, and sleep paralysis has to lift up off your Come on now. I'm trying to help somebody. See, I'm telling you what I know, not what I was taught, but what I learned from myself because of knowledge and application of the word. You see, when I pray in the spirit sometimes, you know what I say? The intercessors know. I say, God, I pray that when the devil look up here, all he sees is a sea of red. Because when he sees red, all he sees is the blood. Come on now. And if he sees red, he can't see who's who. So you can't attack something you don't know. And all he sees is the blood, but he can't attack the blood. He can only get attacked from it. Come on now. Y'all got to understand how powerful the blood of Jesus is. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I mean, you know how sinful we have been. And yet you're new. You're the righteousness of God, according to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, because of the blood of Jesus. Come on. What? Sinners are now saints because of the blood. The believers won't judge even the angels because of the blood. Yes. I'm trying to help somebody. Ooh, see, you got to understand your authority. you got to understand your new position in God. Because, see, if you let the devil trick you into a life of mediocrity, you'll be average all your life. But when you understand that you are superior to the enemy and to the world, you'll understand you're seated in heavenly places yes. with Christ Jesus all because of the blood. Oh, I can find about the blood. Yes. Hallelujah. The blood has never lost its power. Come on now. So let's run over the checklist really quickly. Number one, the character of God, a.k.a. Long. Number two, prayer in the spirit. 
and prayer. Number three, the mind of Christ. Number four, knowledge and application of the word. And number five, the blood of Jesus. This is your warrior's manual. As you begin, I think I pretty much covered pretty much like the entire scope of how this thing works. And so the deeper you get in the word, the more it will be revealed to you. You can upgrade your book. Okay? You can upgrade your manual the more time you spend in the word. Okay? Listen to me though. Check this out. Spiritual Warfare 101. Okay? When the devil come against you, don't be no fun. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help you out. Okay? Don't be no punk. He will come for you. So what? That's his job. Now do yours. Fight him back. Because see, I'm believers. They're not fighting. But believers are supposed to. Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fight him back. Some of y'all can fight in the natural. Let me see you not get beat up in the spirit. Come on now. Come I don't care if you can duck if you buck out here. In the spirit, if you get your tail toe, it really don't matter. Yeah. Hello. So fight that devil back, man. 